gentleman owes it to Auckland. I call Lemon. the Honourable Rodney Hyde. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, and I want to thank the um, the, the Labour opposition um, for their contribution. Um, we've worked through the SOPs, and I especially want to thank uh, the Honourable George Hawkins for his work. When he presented us um, with this SOP, um, it certainly sparked our interest because it took what the people of uh, Auckland were calling for, which was an opportunity to have their say um, on the council-controlled organisations. It took the work of the select committee and took it a couple of steps um, further. And that was that the difficulty as the select committee left it was that the council could require the CCO board meetings to be open to the public, but then the CCOs could then exclude the public if they were doing commercial uh, business. And for some of them, that might be quite regularly. And so that would become a difficulty where people don't know whether they're going to be in or whether they're going to be out. So there was no actual requirement under the law uh, for the public to be able to get to a meeting and to have a say. The second difficulty that it, it, um, Mr Hawkins has brought to our attention through this SOP is that while the public could come along to a council-controlled organisation meeting, actually that's all they could do. So they could look and listen, but actually couldn't have a say. So there was no mechanism by which the members of the public could feed into the council control organisation's board's thinking. So all they could observe is what the board was, was doing, and if they didn't agree with it, um, I'm not sure what then would happen. So what uh, the Honourable George Hawkins has done is... require under the law two meetings, which is a step further, so it's guaranteed that there will be public meetings of the council-controlled organisations. I have to say I find that quite challenging, and it's taken me a bit of thinking to get there uh, in this regard. But in doing that, um, also it gives the public an opportunity to have their say directly to the council-controlled organisation, which I believe is what the public in Auckland are saying, that that's what they'd like to be able to do, rather than to feed directly um, through, the, through the council to the council-controlled organisation, rather actually have a formal process recognised in law by which they can have a direct say uh, to the council-controlled organisation and this is what the Labour Party um, have put up uh, in the name of the Honourable George Hawkins, an SOP to that effect. Well, the, Ross Robertson calls out that it's a good SOP, and um, I'm just exploring it and saying that, um, yes, no, we think it's a good SOP. So what I've done has been have discussed the concept uh, with colleagues to see if there was any interest in supporting uh, the measure of the Honourable George Hawkins. Uh, there was, so we then sent it off to get it uh, just checked uh, with officials to see if there were any fish hooks, uh, and that was fine. There were, however, just a couple of silly technical issues in terms of drafting, so I've discussed it with the Honourable George Hawkins, and we've actually drafted uh, his exact SOP with the technicalities uh, fixed. And I'm happy to report to the House uh, and to the uh, Labour Party and to the Honourable George Hawkins and more particularly to the people of Auckland uh, that the government will be supporting uh, this SOP as an improvement in the governance for Auckland. And I think um, that's a good opportunity uh, for the people of Auckland to have a say directly to the council-controlled organisations. And again, I thank the Labour Party for doing the work on this and in particular, uh, George Hawkins, whose, whose name it is, uh, this, this SOP will be coming law. Call Phil Twyford.